2021 Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners regular meeting. Uh, welcome to everyone. Before we get started, just wanted to make a few comments about, um, about the opportunities to participate uh, in the meeting. This meeting is being broadcast live on channel 20, cable channel 22. Uh, it is also available on the county's YouTube channel, which is youtube.com backslash Cabarrus County. And it is also available on our Cabarrus County webpage. Uh, there is also an opportunity if you want to just listen to the meeting, uh, you may call in at 704-920-2023 uh, and use the PIN number 1234. So we have multiple uh, opportunities for folks to, to listen to the, to the meeting. Also, later on in our meeting, we will have a, a public uh, informal comment uh, section, and we will also have a public hearing. Uh, for people that want to participate in either of those items, uh, you can email your name, address, and telephone number to public comment at cabarruscounty.us. Uh, you may also use the conference call number 704-920-2023 with the PIN number 1234. And then due to state public hearing procedures, uh, citizens will also be allowed an additional 24 hours uh, following the closing of a public hearing uh, to submit additional comments. Uh, via email to public comment at cabarruscounty.us. Uh, so that's that's a lot of information, and I'm sure that that's also available on our webpage for those folks willing um, or interested in participating uh, in our public comment session. Um, now we will move to our agenda, and first up is the approval or correction of the minutes of our last meeting. You all have copies of those minutes before you. And so at this time, uh, are there any corrections to the minutes as presented? Okay, hearing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the meeting minutes as presented. So moved. So moved. Second. Okay, that was a motion by Commissioner Strang a second by Commissioner Honeycutt. Uh, is there any discussion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, no. And that motion passes unanimously. And we move now to approval of the agenda. And uh, you all have a copy of that before you as well. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve the meeting agenda, including the changes on page 59? Move for approval. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Kiger, a second by Commissioner Hsu. Is there any discussion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. All opposed, no. And that motion passes unanimously as well. And we move now to our recognitions and presentations. And first up on our agenda is recognition of outgoing Commissioner Liz Poole. And I'm going to turn the microphone over to County Manager Downs uh, at this time. Okay, thank you. Uh... Mr. Chairman, Lauren, can you put the picture of the plaque up? We're having to do this virtual, and we apologize for having to do it virtual, but we wanted to make sure that we did um, recognize Commissioner Poole. Uh, there's the plaque that uh, has been presented uh, to Commissioner Poole in recognition of her faithful service to the citizens of Cabarrus County and the Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners. Uh, there are some dates and times on there, but I on the plaque, but I want to add to that. So Commissioner Poole uh, served 
on the county commissioners from 2008 to 2020. She served as the vice chair from 2009 to 2011, and then again from 2014 to 2015. Uh, she also served as the chair from 2011 to 2014. Uh, so that's uh, uh, 12 years of service on the county commissioners. She also served on the Cabarrus County Board of Education from 1998 to 2008. And she served as the vice chair from 2001 to 2003 and the chair as in 2004 to 2007. And while she was on the um, on the board of commissioners, she also served on on many committees. And I just wanted to highlight a few of those. And she she had a, a, a great deal of impact on those. And she served many terms on the or several terms on the transportation advisory committee. She also served as chairman a couple of times during that uh, period. She served on the <laughs> water and sewer authority of Cabarrus County. Uh, she served multiple terms there. She's served on the Central Line of Workforce Development Board, and she has served multiple terms on that board. And then she also served on the newly formed uh, um, Early Childhood Education Task Force. In fact, she was uh, one of the leaders that helped get that one started. So as you can tell, Commissioner Poole served the board well, served the county well, uh, both as a commissioner, as a board or a committee, uh, participant and then also as the Board of Education. So uh, congratulations, Commissioner Poole, and thank you for your service to Cabarrus County and to the citizens of Cabarrus County. And I will pass that on to Mr. Chairman, I'll pass it on to you now for your comments. Thank, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Downs. Is, <laughs> is Commissioner Poole present with us tonight? I don't see her on the list. Uh, I'm not sure. I was going to see if she had any words that she would like to to share with us. I don't think she uh, is signed in. Perhaps she is watching on television. Uh, if she does come in, we'll certainly give her an opportunity. But I uh, just want to express thanks to, to, to Liz for all of her service to Cabarrus County. As you very appropriately mentioned that has spanned quite a, a length of times beginning with the school board and and so many other things that she's been involved in it has been my pleasure to <clears throat> work with her over a number of those years um, i think that um, uh, liz and i first began to work work together at united way uh, uh, even at a time that predates uh, all of those things. So she, she's been involved in a lot of things and has not stopped. Uh, when I was went out to the Cabarrus Arena and Event Center to, uh, to get my COVID vaccination, which I'll talk a little bit about a little bit later on, uh, Liz was there uh, volunteering, helping with that, with those vaccination clinics as well. So so thank you, Liz, for everything that you've done and everything that you uh, continue to do to, to make Cabarrus County the wonderful place that it is um, to live and work. And I'll um, open the floor Mr. now. Chair, Chair, I'm yeah, sorry. Chair, just to give you an update real quick, she, she's having issues with her computer. She's trying to reboot now. So maybe by the time the other other commissioners have their comments, she may, may be able to, uh, to get on and in, in Okay, very, very good. So I'll open up the floor now for uh, anyone else that, that has any comments they'd like to make uh, to or on behalf of Liz. Mr. Chairman, I, I will just reiterate what I had mentioned when uh, at, at, at what her last meeting was. When Commissioner Hsu and I served as uh, the chairman and vice chairman of the school board, it was overlapped when she was the chairman of the county commission, and she was very helpful, at least I thought to me, since she had served on both boards. And that was a tremendous help to me in uh, trying to navigate a lot of issues that we were dealing with over on uh, the, the school side at the time, but d developing the partnership and, and trying to work with the with the county. So I was tremendously grateful to her 
and the help that she gave me, uh, both at, when I was vice chair with uh, Commissioner Shu, and then the year that I was the, the chairman of that board. So I just wanted to reiterate that, how much I appreciated that. Thank you. And if my math serves me correctly, that looks like 22 years of service, public service, um, as an elected official serving in leadership capacities most of the time. And so I think that just speaks volumes. And as, as uh, Chairman Morris said, of her continued volunteer service out at the vaccination um, site. So uh, just I hope she'll enjoy not having to come to meetings for a while and, and uh, find what her new passion will be. Best of luck. Thank I you. just wanted to, I yeah, just wanted I'm, to wish, wish, okay, uh, Barbara, go ahead. No, that's okay, Lynn. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted to thank, uh, Commissioner Shu or Commissioner, uh, Poole for all her service. I mean, she's been an asset to our community and I know she will continue to do so. And I just wanted to wish her the best of luck, um, in her future endeavors. And I, I too could say an awful lot about Liz because actually we have been in public service together for 20 years. When I got on the school board in the year 2000, Liz was on the school board. And uh, so we've been friends and public servants together for all this time. And uh, Liz is without a doubt an extraordinary person. And, uh, you know, to be in public service you can't just be a normal person because you deal with so many different things from different angles and people coming at you from all angles as my fellow commissioners know about now. And you just have to be able to sort of like juggling the plate. You know, you just sort of have to just keep them going one at a time because as soon as one gets to acting funny and another one pops up. So, but Liz has always handled it good. And I appreciate you service Liz. And I wish you the best at whatever your future endeavors are. Thank you. Appreciate appreciate all of all of those comments for for Liz. I wish she were uh, on here with us to respond. And but as as county manager mentioned, she's having some technical difficulties with her computer. I think so. Fortunately, all of these uh, comments and well wishes have been recorded. Uh, and will be rebroadcast uh, numerous times, so she will get an opportunity to to hear what everyone has to say. So thank thank you, Liz Poole. And we move now to item number two from Human Resources, recognition of Cheryl Harris on her retirement. And I am happy to call on Carol to Karen Calhoun. For that presentation. Thank you, Chairman Morris. Can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> Good evening, Commissioners. Thank you for the opportunity to recognize Cheryl. It is truly my honor to come before you this evening and recognize Cheryl Harris uh, as she sunsets her career and congratulate her in uh, her retirement at the end of this month. We do have her clock to present to her, but I'm holding on to it till her very last day. So hopefully she'll hang out with us for another week or two before she goes. Uh, Cheryl started her career 34 years ago in the state of Oklahoma as a social worker. And she and I have shared some stories from that time. And I often have told her she needs to write a book. Um, and maybe one day she'll get to that. Thankfully, she made her way to North Carolina around 15 years or so ago in the capacity serving as a social worker in uh, several other counties before she moved here to Cabarrus County to work with us. She served as a social work supervisor, social work program coordinator, social work program administrator, and here in Cabarrus County for the last eight years as the child welfare program administrator. If you know anything about Cheryl Harris, uh, she is an individual with high positive energy and a true champion and advocate for children and families. She has dedicated her entire 34 year career <laughs> to one of the most challenging but rewarding professions in child welfare. She has uh, worked so very hard providing services to children and families, ensuring children are safe and protected and their needs are met. She has gone to bat for her child welfare staff, 
and has led by example with passion and conviction. We are truly blessed to have her here for the last eight years in Cabarrus County. We will miss her and we wish her the absolute best in her retirement. Cheryl, thank you for serving us so very well. I am told that retirement is wonderful. It's doing nothing without worrying about getting caught at it. Stay young at heart, be kind in spirit, and enjoy your retirement to the very fullest. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And I truly appreciate the opportunity that you guys have given me for the last eight years. Um, it has been fun. I've really enjoyed working with each one of you, with our community, uh, building this child welfare program, um, leaving behind a great team. Um, they're all passionate about what they do. None of us are perfect, but we, tr we truly, truly strive to be. <clears throat> and um, I'll miss everybody. It's like living, leaving my work family. Um, so that's gonna be hard that very last day next Friday. It's gonna be very challenging. But I do appreciate each and every one of you, all of the uh, administrators and division heads that are on the call, work with many of you and truly respect all that you guys are doing. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Thank you, Cheryl. I, there, there are thousands of, of children and families out there that, that thank you as well and you're your energy is just tremendous. It's, it's uh, as long as I've been involved on the board of commissioners, you've been here. So it's hard for me to think of, uh, of you not, not being here, but you certainly have, have worked hard and, and served uh, the citizens of Cabarrus County well, and, and, and certainly deserve uh, your retirement and rest. And so I certainly wish you well. Uh, but you definitely will will be missed, and you certainly are appreciated uh, for what for what you have done for all of us. And uh, is there anybody else that would like to make some comments at this time? I would just say I've been fortunate enough to serve as the liaison uh, to the Human Services Board for several years now, and had the opportunity to, to get to know Cheryl a little bit better through that. And, and I couldn't say it any better than Karen did. The high positive energy, caring and leading with passion, I think describes Cheryl to a T. And she had lots more adjectives, but I won't repeat them all. But but best <laughs> of luck, and we hope you enjoy your retirement. You certainly have earned it and deserve it. Thank you. Well, we cer certainly do. It, it is it's just not quite the same on the computer screen. Uh, so we we hopefully were to be able to do this in, in person uh, at, at another time. And so we're kind of on a, on a run tonight. So next up from Human Resources, Thank you, uh, recognition of emergency management director, uh, Bobby Smith's retirement. And I'll turn the floor over to Jonathan Marshall. Thank you. And I'm gonna ask Lauren Linker to put up a couple of pictures while I'm talking so you don't have to look at me while I talk about Bobby. Um, unfortunately, Bobby is on the road um, and did not want to call in because he didn't think that was safe, which as an emergency management director sounds like something you should do. Right. He did promise me he would watch later, and you know how it makes him miserable when people say nice things about him, so I hope that um, we can make him miserable tonight. Bobby retired at the end of 2020 with almost 20 years with Cabarrus County as both the fire marshal and the emergency management director. And it would take me far too long to go through all the highlights of his career, but just touching on some of the things, you know, in order to be ready for emergencies, you have to plan and practice. And Bobby led countless plans, exercises, and drills to be ready. I don't know if you've ever, any of you have ever been able to go to some of them, like decontamination sites at Northwest Cabarrus or some of the exercises they're running in the EOC where they're simulating a disaster, but he led all those things. So if something happened and when something happened, we would be ready. He also knew that you sometimes as a leader have to follow and assist. So he worked on a number of statewide committees, um, state organizations, 
as well as regional organizations. And an example I give is is the the national political conventions that have been hosted in Charlotte. Is those those type of events you know um, affect the entire region, and the whole region has to pitch in for, in order for them to be successful. And he had a large part in that. Um, sometimes you have to be that leader, though. And that means when we open up the EOC, he is the leader, and everyone needs to listen and follow to make sure we respond correctly. And it's unfortunate that there are times when we have had um, we have had natural disasters that they have had to have that EOC in place in order to respond properly, from tornadoes to hurricanes to snow and ice events. Um, the fortunate part is one of the things we drill the most on, and that Bobby has has probably the most activity in is working with um, potential issues at McGuire Nuclear. And we are very fortunate that that hasn't happened, but I can tell you that he has made sure the community is prepared. Um, other times you, you have to um, know that you can't respond by yourself also. And while he's leading, he worked daily with other local emergency providers in their efforts to make sure we addressed any event and, and any possibility in the most full way possible. And then finally, you really have to pay attention to detail. You can't leave anything unturned. And um, Bobby was so detail is so detail oriented. Um, it was sometimes makes us nervous to send him internal policies because we knew how much he was going to read into it, pick it apart, and send us back comments. And I learned later from his colleagues with the state that they felt that way yet they sent him policies and legislation because they knew when they got it back, they were gonna get a thorough review of that policy. Before he came to Cabarrus County, Bobby worked for the city of Greensboro at the fire department. Um, that was also more than 15 years of service. Um, he was a firefighter, a fire investigator, and a telecommunicator with them. You know, Bobby, he, he may not have said this, but I know he, well, he did say this because he's so proud of it. He is also a veteran of the U.S. Navy. Um, Bobby had served in both reserve and active duty as an emergency and routine medical care provider. And then he also was called up in support of Operation Desert Storm. Probably one of the, um, not probably, one of the most important things to Bobby is his family and faith. And he lived those as an example lives those as an example. I keep saying things like Bobby's gone. Bobby is very much still a resident of Kannapolis. We are very fortunate for that. But he and his wife, Susan, live there, and they're the proud parents of Caleb, who is a senior at UNC Charlotte. Um, you may or may not have known that Bobby is an ordained deacon and a longtime Sunday school teacher, a mentor, uh, a counselor. Um, and those are things that, although he wasn't going to be in your face about them. If you needed help or guidance or just some counsel, Bobby is always ready to provide that. He had a, a very small retirement event. That's not surprising knowing his personality. And he received honors from Representative Hudson's office, from state partners, and from his local partners. Um, probably, I think, one of the most important things is he was awarded um, the Order of the Longleaf Pine. And I don't think it was so much it was important to him and it meant a lot to him, but what meant more to him and is very telling in, in Bobby's um, ties to his family is he is the second member of his family to receive that. His father also received the award when he retired from the state patrol. And I know to be able to tell his father that he had joined him with the Order of the Longleaf Pine probably meant the world to him. So um, that actually is all I have other than I did want you to see those nice pictures of Bobby um, Tom Selleck Smith <laughs> there displayed. Thank you Jonathan very much and, uh, yeah I was I was gonna I was gonna say that that doesn't look like the Bobby Smith that I know um, it's his, his hairstyle is considerably different these days than than in those photographs but thank you for all those comments um, it has been my pleasure to, to, to work with Bobby during the time that, that, that I've been on the board. I did have an opportunity to, um, to have a, a lengthy phone conversation with Bobby on the day of his retirement celebration, as I'm sure others of you did as well. Um, we're doing things differently in the, the time of COVID 
but uh, be certainly best wishes to Bobby. Uh, and I can certainly, I can hear his voice uh, offering that explanation as to why it would not be appropriate for him to call in uh, while he, he was out on the road as well. Best wishes to Bobby. Bobby so will be, will be missed. And uh, even though Bobby's not listening, if any of the rest of you would like to make any comments, please, please uh, do so at this time. I'll just jump in to say that um, I, I didn't know Bobby as well, but the few times that I did get a chance to talk to him, he was always so professional and came across so kind and, and uh, of course, very knowledgeable. And Jonathan, when you say that faith and family was the most important to him, I think I could tell that just from the little internet action I had with him, which when they say actions speak louder than words, I think Bobby's one of those people. And uh, so I wish him a, a, the best of luck in retirement as well. Like I said, hope he finds his niche and uh, enjoy his life. Okay. Thank, thank you for those comments. And we'll move now to item four. Uh, which is a uh, proclamation for Black History Month. Um, I will, that proclamation proclaims February 2021 as Black History Month in Cabarrus County. Uh, and I will read the proclamation at this time. Uh, Black History Month proclamation. Whereas Black History Month is the observance of a special period to recognize the achievements and contributions of African Americans to our county, state, and nation. And whereas this observance presents the special opportunity to become more knowledgeable about black heritage and to truly honor the many black leaders who have played a part in the progress of our county. And whereas such knowledge can strengthen the insight of all our citizens regarding the issues of human rights, the great strides that have been made in the crusade to eliminate the barriers of equality for minority groups and the continuing struggle against racial discrimination and poverty. And whereas as a result of their determination hard work, intelligence, and perseverance, African Americans have achieved exceptional success in all aspects of society, including business, education, politics, science, athletic, and the arts. And now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Board of Commissioners for Cabarrus County, North Carolina, do hereby recognize February 2021 as Black History Month and encourage all citizens to participate in the educational and celebratory events honoring the contributions and accomplishments of African Americans. So do I hear a motion that we adopt this proclamation as presented? So moved. Second. Okay. okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Honeycutt and a second by Commissioner Kiger. Uh, is there any discussion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say no. And that motion passes unanimously. And we move now to informal public comment. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of our meeting, there are several ways uh, for folks to participate. Uh, they can uh, email their name, address, and telephone number to public comment at cabarrascounty.us. They can call in on the conference number which is 704-920-2023 and use the PIN number 1234. And also we have a camera and a microphone uh, set up in the regular 
uh, commission meeting chambers at the governmental center uh, where folks can come there to make pom public comments as well. Um, and so I drug that out just a little bit so folks would have an opportunity to call or email if they wanted to participate. So at this time, I will call on our clerk, Lauren Linker, uh, to see if we have anyone wishing to participate in informal public comments. I have not received any emails. There is no one in the conference room and there is no one on the phone line either. OK, thank you, Lauren. OK, so there being no one to participate in informal public comments, we will move now to the consent agenda. Uh, you all have a copy of that before you and our consent agenda, of course, consists of items uh, that we discussed at length at our work session two weeks ago. Um, and of course, the public has had an opportunity to to uh, to comment on those items if 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 they so desire. Uh, so do I hear a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. Second. OK, we have a motion from Commissioner Strang, a second from Commissioner Kiger uh, to approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there any discussion? Commissioner, uh, Chairman, Chairman, uh, Commissioner Shu has lost his connection. He's trying to get back on, but he's he's not having any success. But so so you when they do the motion or when they, you hear the vote, you won't hear him because he's not able to get back on yet. Very good. Thank you. Well, hope hopefully that he'll get that resolved. Sounds like more more than one of us are uh, are having some issues in that regard uh, tonight. Um, so hearing no uh, no further discussion, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, uh, all opposed, no. And that motion passes. And we will move now to new business. Uh, first up from the finance department is presentation of the fiscal year 2020 comprehensive annual financial report. And we are delighted to have Wendy Hagler with us as her first presentation to our board in her new position. Welcome, Wendy. Thank you and good evening. I'm glad to be here and part of the Cabarrus County team. Tonight, I will present the 2020 Fiscal Year Comprehensive Annual Financial Report or the CAFR. If approved tonight, the CAFR will be available on the county website. The document is prepared with great precision and involves a long process with the help of the majority of the finance department. I can't take credit for this year's financial statements as the staff was put on the final touches when I started at the beginning of December. I want to thank retired finance director Suzanne Farrington and deputy finance director Suzanne Burgess for organizing and managing the yearly audit and CAFR preparation. I also want to recognize our accounting supervisors, Katrina Myers-Arnold, Teresa Clare, and Jenny Fox, as well as the County Manager's Office and the entire finance staff. Without their assistance, the audit and the CAFR preparation, preparation would not be possible. Management is responsible for the preparation and fair presentation of the financial statements in accordance with accounting principles generally accepted in the United States of America. After the CAFR is prepared by the county, it is reviewed by the auditors and then submitted to the Local Government Commission or the LGC for approval. The CAFR was completed on December 16th and submitted to the LGC. The LGC approved the CAFR on January the 5th. The county also submits the CAFR for the Government Finance Officers Association's Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. The FY 2019 report was the 35th consecutive year this award has been received, and we have submitted for the FY 2020 CAFR for award consideration. At this time, I would like to introduce Matt Braswell, Senior Manager with the accounting firm Martin Starnes & Associates. 
Thank you, Wendy, and uh, good evening, board members, and thank you for allowing me to take some time out of your meeting. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Yes, sir. All right, um, and and also I, I would like to to thank uh, Suzanne uh, Burgess, Susan Farrington, um, everyone in the finance department that Wendy mentioned there. Um, very, very great job, very great to work with. Um, everyone able to get us everything in a timely manner and in this time in this pandemic and, and everything doing a lot of information remotely um, and able to uh, able to do everything timely uh, with without a hiccup and uh, just uh, it, it was a pleasure to work with with Cabarrus County this year and uh, we truly do appreciate that but I um, I will uh, touch base and like Wendy said your report was approved by the LGC and uh, also uh, in your package, you will have the uh, independent auditor's report, the report, report on internal controls, and the report on compliance, um, I think is in your packet as well tonight. Uh, let me screen share. Um, can everyone see the presentation? I can see it. Okay. Um, just wanted to go over those reports that, that you have in your packet there. We issued an unmodified opinion on the financial statements, which that means an unmodified opinion is a clean opinion. That is the best opinion that you can receive. And that basically states that an auditor can state without reservation that your financial statements are fairly presented in all material respects in accordance with GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles. We had no financial statement findings to uh, to make you aware of. We had no single audit findings as well related to your federal or state funding. Um, no DSS or health department, any, any findings of that nature. Um, issued an unmodified or a clean opinion, only federal and state awards as well. So your report uh, received a clean report throughout financial statements, uh, single audit, federal and state awards. Um, through and through there. So overall, uh, a very, very good audit, very, very um, uh, good set of financial statements that you have and a very good finance staff and everyone um, that, that had a part in this year's audit. And um, your finance staff does go above and beyond um, with your financial statements and so, uh, provides um, extra reports and different things to get that GFOA certificate. And so that is something that, uh, that I do not take lightly that is, uh, you know, uh, above the standard there. And so uh, you have a top notch finance department. We uh, we issued uh, no findings and clean report this year. And I will hand it back over to Wendy. All right. Thank you, Matt. After the letters Mr. Basman referred to for your reference are the general fund balance sheet and statement of revenues, expenditures and changes in fund balance. The general fund is our main operating fund. Tonight, I do not plan to go through each line item of the report. However, at a later time, I can be available for any individual questions that you may have. After the balance sheet and statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balance, you will find some highlights of the FY20 fund balance that I have included for your reference. In fiscal year 2020, total revenues and expenditures, or revenues were over expenditures, $9.7 million. Revenues were nine or 7.4 over amended budget amounts and expenditures were under budget by 10.7 million. The biggest areas where revenues were over budget amounts were property taxes at almost 2 million, intergovernmental revenues at 2.2 million, and permits and fees at 1.4. Pro the property tax collection rate decreased slightly from the prior year from 99.3 to 98.7. There were increases in total annual <laughs> values due to new construction and real estate improvements. The valuation at the end of June in 19 was 23.1 billion and increased to 24.2 billion at the end of June 2020. Local option sales tax increased 2.4% from 51.7 billion million to 50 almost 53 million. Um, Sales tax was affected by COVID, but the county was very fortunate to see an overall increase in sales tax when other counties and municipalities saw a decrease in sales tax during the year. The FY20 increase is also attributed to increases in collection of sales tax on online purchases. Expenditures were under budget 10.7 million. 
Some of the underspending are 1.5 million related to expenditures that were reappropriated into FY21 for uncompleted projects. County departments were conservative in their spending, resulted in an additional 9.2 million of savings. The largest areas where these savings were was county salary and fringe expenses of 2.4 yeah, under budget due to unfilled positions and turnover. Human services was 2.2 under budget due to reduced expenses in administration, transportation, economic family support, economic services, and child welfare. There were unearned economic incentives of 1.7 and unused contingencies of 675,000. Normally, the calculation of fund balance in excess of 15%, fund balance policy is presented together with the audit. However, this year it was approved in December prior to the financial statement presentation. presentation. This year, 5.8 million was transferred to the community investment fund per the county's policy. Please feel free to contact me at any time for questions about the financial statements. And again, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Susan Farrington, Suzanne Burgess, Katrina Myers-Arnold, Jenny Fox, Teresa Clare, the County Manager's Office, and the entire finance staff for their dedication during the annual audit and completion of the catheter. The comprehensive annual financial report for June 30, 2020 is submitted for your approval. Thank you, Wendy. Um, we certainly appreciate all the, the, the hard work that uh, the entire finance department has done on this. I think that it should be obvious to the public just, just listening uh, to what you just said. It is no uncomplicated matter. Um, and it is amazing to me uh, the, the ease and skill at which you and your folks in the finance department can, can talk about and explain all these items. Uh, and my head is spinning, uh, looking at all the, 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 the different, uh, the different funds, the different, uh, you know, okay. all of those factors that have to be taken into account. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Matt, for, uh, for all of your kind comments. Uh, we are very fortunate to have the staff that we have, uh, and we appreciate, um, uh, Martin Starnes thorough. Uh, auditing of those funds. I think the public can feel very, very comfortable uh, with the way that their money uh, is handled with Cabarrus County. Uh, the comments that you made about um, about the sales tax, uh, the fact that we actually realized an increase sounds almost unbelievable uh, to me that 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 could have occurred. Uh, during this time that we've had so much disruption of our businesses and our hospitality industry and 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 on down the line. So that that truly is um, a, a miracle. And so we are uh, look forward to those days when when business is is back wide open and booming. Uh, and I, th I think we will would certainly prosper at that time. Does anybody else have any questions or comments for Wendy? Uh, we thank you very much for that presentation and and and, um, and appreciate all that that you and all of your folks have done. And so we we will move now to item G2. Uh, I heard somebody talking in the background. Um, this is Debbie. I have I have Commissioner Shu on the conference line, so um, he may be speaking, and it'll look like it's coming through my microphone. So um, we've just got a backup solution in place here for him to join the rejoin the meeting. Very good. I'm glad you were able to 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 get get him back online with us. Um, so so we will now move to item G2, which is from the Planning and Development Department. Um, this is an item that we discussed at length uh, during our work session meeting uh, two weeks ago. Uh, the changes uh, that are being made to our uh, zoning ordinance uh, to comply with, with, with new regulations. Uh, this uh, is an item that will require a public hearing, which has been uh, advertised. Uh, 
uh, and the public has been given notice. Uh, and at this time, I will uh, turn the floor over to Susie Morris for any additional comments that she would like to make and for you to um, address any questions to her that you might have. Uh, welcome, Susie. Good evening. Um, this is the proposed amendments to the ordinance to comply with 160D. Um, I do just need to add in one quick thing. Um, in working on a project this past week, we did find a conflict in the ordinance. So we need to amend the public service facility standards from a level uh, two to a level one so that the text is consistent in the ordinance. Um, again, we did talk about all of this at great length. There are a lot of changes, um, but most of them are required. Uh, and again, some of them are only changes in name of what things are called, but they touch a lot of chapters. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have and the board will need to hold the public hearing and um, the amendments pending comments within the 24 hours would then be effective, I believe, tomorrow if they are approved. OK, any questions um, for for Susie? And if we would, um, while you are formulating those questions, um, I did miss one item on uh, G1. Uh, we do, which was our financial report. Uh, we do need um, a motion uh, to accept the fiscal year 2020 comprehensive annual financial report as presented. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Kiger. A second uh, by Commissioner Strang. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say no. That motion passes. <clears throat> Susie, I apologize, and we come back now. Does anyone have any questions uh, for Susie before we open the public hearing? <clears throat> Okay, hearing none, we will open the public hearing. Uh, as I have mentioned uh, twice during the earlier portion of the meeting, there are multiple ways that folks can participate uh, in the public hearing. Uh, they can uh, send their uh, information via email to public comment at cabarrascounty.us. They can also uh, call in on the phone line, which is 704-920-2023 and use the pin number 1234. Uh, they can speak in the commissioner's chambers in person or they will also have 24 hours following uh, the public hearing to submit additional comments. So at this time, I will open the public hearing and call on our clerk, Lauren Linker, <clears throat> to see if we have any um, folks wishing to speak. Yes. As you can see, there's no one in the chambers. I have not received any emails, and the only one that was on the line was Commissioner Shu. Okay, th thank you, Lauren. Okay, there being no one uh, to speak uh, on the public hearing, I will close the public hearing. And at this time, I will entertain a motion to accept to motion to accept approving text amendment text 2020 0001 amending chapter one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and appendix A of the Cabarrus County Development Ordinance. Mr. Chairman, I'll move for approval. Second. Thank you. Uh, motion by Commissioner Shu, who is back with us. 
and a second from Mr. Honeycutt, I believe. So, yes. is there any uh, discussion on that motion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. All opposed, please say no. On uh, that motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Okay, we move now. Uh, that completes. All, well, we have one more item on on new business from Kannapolis City Schools. Uh, the 2020 Department of Public Instruction Facility Needs Survey. I think this is the same item that we. Uh, considered at our last meeting for Cabarrus County Schools. Uh, we are glad to have Will Crabtree with us to talk about that item. Good evening. I appreciate you um, having me on tonight. Uh, this is the DPI facility needs survey that um, we're required to do. I think it's every five years. It's 10 year projection. Uh, we look at uh, capacity now and capacity in 10 years, enrollment now, enrollment 10 years. So I won't go all the way through it, but um, and, and I also want to to point out this is by no means a commitment. It's just a, a, a vote that you review the information. So no commitment here. But uh, on the zero to five year plan, we had um, basically addition renovation at A.L. Brown High renovations at Forest Park, addition renovation at Fred L. Wilson Elementary, and addition renovation at Jackson Park Elementary. And then uh, in year six to 10, we had renovations at various elementaries. Those renovations basically consist of replacing the HVAC systems, piping, duct work, things like that. And then um, North Kannapolis Elementary School, unfortunately, the name hadn't been changed yet on the state documents when this came out. It still is as Woodrow Wilson, um, but a new school there. Uh, and I think we've uh, talked before that would be a sole request that we make to the Rowan County Commissioners, not the Cabarrus County Commissioners. So I just want to you know, open it up for questions if anybody has any. Okay, questions for Mr. Crabtree. I'll ask you the same question. I asked Cabarrus County Schools uh, with this uh, length of, of needs and improvements that we send to Department of Public Instruction. Uh, will they be sending the money back to, to cover all this? I expect the check uh, to be in the mail anytime. Well, I'm, I appreciate your humor. Yeah. <laughs> no, unfortunately, I, I, I wish that were the case, but uh, uh, I do not expect that. Um, you know, hopefully at some point in time we will receive some type of state level funding, whether that be a bond or something else. Great. Thank you. Any any other questions for Mr. Crabtree? OK, thank you, Will. This this is like the um, the one that we received from Cabarrus County Schools does not actually require a vote, uh, but just consensus uh, from the board that you have received the report uh, and seen the information and had an opportunity to ask questions. Uh, so seeing nodding of heads on the screen and not hearing any questions, um, I will say that we have that uh, consensus. Uh, and we'll we'll open up the floor for any any questions if anybody does have anything before we move on. OK, I don't hear anybody speaking up, so thank you, Will. We appreciate you being with us. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. OK, that concludes all of our new business on tonight's agenda. So at this time uh, we move to reports. And uh, at this time, I will receive updates from commission members who serve as liaisons to municipalities or on various boards and committees. And, uh, go ahead, Commissioner Strang. 
Um, I attended the Midland Town Council meeting last week and was provided an update on their uh, water and sewer project for 24, 27, as well as they finalized the plans between the county and the design team for the uh, memorial, Veterans Memorial um, in the park out there. So we've got that finalized and moving forward. They're looking for some in-kind kind of like elbow grease to help with some of the plantings and things like that, if anybody is interested. Um, I also met with the youth commission right before this meeting and there were two initiatives. One is mental health Mondays, as well as, well as uh, talk it out Tuesdays. And they were working um, also recruiting for the 2021, 2022 school year uh, to fill any vacancies for those that are dropping off the commission after their terms. Very good. Thank you for that report. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does anybody else? Just a comment, Mr. Chairman. That is, uh, I attended, I think you and maybe Mike attended one of the Central Carolina Regional Council of Governments meetings where we've been discussing the high capacity transit. And I just wanted the guys to know that, you know, we're working on that. We've got several more meetings lined up. It's a not a multi-million, but a multi-billion dollar project that would encompass the region of the Central Carolina Council of Government. And, um, you know, uh, the mayors have attended, uh, Mayor Hennett and Mayor uh, Douche have attended these uh, conferences with us. And they, as long as, as my, well as myself, have expressed our interest in what's the high capacity transit going to do for Cabarrus County particularly our west side and uh, around the Concord Mills and bringing it from the university. Of course, Jonathan's on the line and he probably knows a whole lot more about it than I do. But I just want everybody to know that we are working on that and we got several more conferences lined up and, um, you know, it's going to be a good thing. But it's going to be a costly thing to what degree Cabarrus County will be involved financially that I don't think we know at this point and probably be a while before we do know. All we do know is it's going to be expensive. So I just wanted to give you an update on that and uh, appreciate all the work that you guys do. Thank you, Commissioner Shu. It was my pleasure to to participate in that. And uh, uh, this this is truly thinking down the road. Uh, these are not things that we're going to see happen uh, right away. But if we don't begin those discussions and that planning, uh, far, far in advance, uh, then, then it will never come to fruition. And I think that uh, that due to your efforts and others, uh, the I think we're more on the forefront uh, of, of the future planning because we, we do realize the impact of, of the transportation needs to the entire region. It's not just a Charlotte or a Mecklenburg County uh, issue. It, it is the surrounding counties as well. So appreciate your leadership and in, in, in representing us uh, in, in that regard. Does anybody else have any other reports they'd like to bring at this time? Mr. Chairman, I would like to uh, just uh, tell the board that it was my pleasure to represent us at the uh, North Carolina Association of County Commissioner Legislative Goals setting meeting. It was a, a, a two-day session and a lot of good discussion and um, a lot of things that would impact us. And so uh, I think obviously with a year of virtual meetings, the, 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 the one that keeps coming up and has been since literally since I think that I joined the board was rural broadband access. And uh, I think there there, there, there's probably a lot more ears listening to that in Raleigh now than there has been before. And uh, of course, that was one of the goals. They, we will get feedback. At, we have approved the goals. We will now get feedback so that we will be able to provide input to prioritize the goals. So um, I assume that will come back through our uh, uh, Lauren, uh, the clerk, and county manager Downs, and then we will proceed from there. We. Um, the the NACO legislative conference will the, the one the trip that we typically take to DC will be all will be virtual. I did not hear any discussion about the uh, the trip to Raleigh of whether that will be in person or 
or virtual. So we'll just have to wait and see on that. Right. Thank, thank you for representing us there. That that was quite a time commitment. Uh, those two day sessions, and I was able to to attend some of them. Didn't get all of them, but I did hear uh, your presentations on behalf of Cabarrus County, and we very much uh, appreciate that. Uh, it was my pleasure. Yeah. Any any other reports? Um, I will mention that I do serve on the uh, Cabarrus. Uh, the Board of Health uh, with the Cabarrus Health Alliance, uh, and they actually um, had their meeting tonight at 5.30, so I had to leave that one a little early to get to this one, uh, but I just wanted to, um, uh, to compliment all of the folks at our Health Alliance on the tremendous work that they have been doing um, uh, all the time, but most particularly during uh, this COVID pandemic. Um, uh, the, it is truly uh, more than, than, than most anybody realizes the number of, of hours and the number of issues uh, that they are dealing with uh, right now, and they are doing a tremendous job. Um, I, I am one of those uh, over 65 individuals uh, that was um, able to, to take the vac vaccination uh, this week. Um, I was very fortunate. A friend sent me a text message and said they've, they've opened up reservations. And so I immediately got online, uh, went to the Health Alliance's website uh, to their online appointment uh, facility and was able to get an appointment. Uh, and so I did go to the clinic yesterday at the Cabarrus Events and Arena, Arena and Events Center, uh, where they have those drive through vaccinations. Um, I was totally impressed uh, with the organization. Uh, the way that I had it had that set up, you you make your appointment. Uh, they provide provide you with the paperwork online. You can fill it out, have it ready to hand to them when you get there. Uh, just just uh, the organization was just amazing, uh, and so it ran so smooth. Um, uh, a lot of folks, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, from the community are volunteering uh, to help with those immunization uh, clinics. And so so it just just worked incredibly smooth. I'm so very proud of of our health alliance and 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 all of Cabarrus County, the way that that's working uh, for um, and and I was just very, very fortunate to 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 be able to <clears throat> to make that reservation yesterday uh, for people out there that, that have questions about the vaccine or the process of being vaccinated. Uh, I'm certainly happy to speak to my experience. Um, I took my shot yesterday morning. Um, uh, the, the, the lady that gave me the shot afterwards, I said, you know, she said, OK, I'm finished. I said, well, I, I didn't even feel it, but it really it was just about like taking a flu shot. Um, I had a little bit of soreness in my arm uh, last night. Uh, this morning that is completely gone. Uh, I have felt no effects uh, from the vaccine at all. Um, I've heard a few people say that uh, they, they felt a little sluggish maybe the day after that has not happened to me. Uh, and so I am, am very appreciative of the opportunity to have that. I encourage everyone uh, to go to the Cabarrus Health Alliance website um, and, and they continue to add those clinics as that supply of vaccine comes in. Uh, and so go online, sign up and get the vaccination. Um, I think that, that that's the way that we're going to find our way out of this uh, pandemic that we're involved in. Uh, and, and so 
Uh, I hope that that people will will do that and protect themselves and protect others as well. Um, it's it's been it's been a it's been a long road, longer than most of us thought it would be, and so it's nice to see uh, some light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, we still have people in Cabarrus County that are dying on a daily basis uh, from COVID. Uh, we've had some some of our, our 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 volunteers in the community, folks that have have served on some of our committees that have succumbed to to, to uh, disease, and and so it, it's really really important. So. Um, uh, my experience has been a very positive one, and I, I hope that other people will will consider that as well. So, are there any other uh, reports? I would just echo what you said, and not only about the efficiency. I've heard so many positive comments about the appointments and the efficiency, but not only that, but just how upbeat, friendly, and nice and professional everybody's been. I mean, they've. I've never seen so many happy people to go get a vaccine and on top of that talk about how kind and, and uh, great everybody was. So thanks to the volunteers and the Health Alliance for making this a great experience for our community. Great. Thank you. OK, we will move now to general comments by board members. If anybody has anything else that they would uh, like to add. OK, hearing none, we do not have need of a closed session tonight. So at this time, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. OK, a motion by Commissioner Strang, second by Commissioner Hsu to adjourn. All in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. All opposed, please say no. Uh, we now stand adjourned. Uh, we thank everyone for joining us tonight, and we look forward to seeing everybody at our work session on February the 1st. Thank you.